So in this one, we're gonna I'm gonna cut this out and hopefully make a little shoe rack thing for it. It's not a lot of space, but I'm hoping there's enough under here just to make uh, just that little shoe rack make it easier for us. It means we can take some of the storage in from underneath the other set of stairs. Let's see how I get on. Okay, so let's start this off with trying to get rid of this plasterboard that's here. I had no idea what I was doing. I just know I needed to get it out. I did try and get out in one piece. Didn't really work, but you'll see that in a minute. But I thought if I just cut round the out, it might just pop out. You never know. Well, it turns out that I do because it's me and I had to use brute force and ignorance in the end. This wouldn't be the first time I've been called a blunt object. Okay, now pay attention to this next bit because I make some very bold statements. One turns out to be true, one turns out to be a lie. I bet you won't be able to guess which one's which. Also, we've got a steel thing in the way. That's fine, I can take that out. Yes, but you can't have any more shoes. <laughs> this, is, this is the shoe storage. If it doesn't fit in here, we don't have it. Mm. Did you catch them? Now, I know which one was true, and I'm sure by now, you know which one's true. I think it's probably best that we just leave it there and move on quickly. Okay, good plan. Okay, so now next comes the somewhat easy bit and demolishing what's there. The skirting board I need to try and save, but everything else pretty much to be ripped out. The metal bits were fairly hard, but with a bit of brute force and ignorance, I managed to smash my way through it. I mean, this is a hammer drill though, isn't it? That's, that's what it's meant to be used for, hammering. Am I wrong? So I think what my plan with this space now is rather than making drawers, because it's quite slow, low here, so I didn't really want to faff about with that, I think what I'm gonna do is just build a rolling platform that comes in and out. So I did get some of these casters, which should, be really fine on there. So I'm gonna build a little sort of base platform and then a structure to go around it. So then we've got like sort of shelves to put the shoes on. I think that'll work. We'll have to see. But, all right, let's head to the garage and cut some wood. Managed to pick up some small lightweight two by fours. I then started building just a basic square frame. So the base is roughly 800 mil square. That'll fit just snugly in there. Most of this is made out of 18 mil birch ply. I think I used too many screws when attaching it to the base though. The way that I built this was slightly wrong um, and I had to use these small 12 mil ply shims underneath the wheels. So at this point, I gone darn realized that I messed up. So having the wood set up like this uh, with the wheels on the bottom as well, you're probably looking at about almost four inches of height there. And that was actually going to lose quite a lot of storage space, especially in that small end. So by turning them that way and having the ply on top, I actually cut down about an inch or so. So, uh, yeah, made the decision to rip it apart. Ten minutes after I finished building it. I decided to do it differently this time because I had the plywood sheet cut to size. So I thought I'd actually just measure and line it up with that rather than making the frame first and attaching it afterwards. I could then just measure the gap that I had left and just cut the wood to the size I needed. There was some gentle persuasion needed here. That seems to be a theme with me in this video. Hitting things as hard as I can. Probably just me. I then just quickly reattach the top and attach the casters back as well. So one thing I noticed really early was that the floor was not level with the laminate and it wouldn't be because I put laminate on top of the concrete. So I needed to use a spare bit of 12mm ply just to lift it up that little bit so it would roll smoothly in and out. And I do apologise for the rear end shots. I really had nowhere else to put the camera. Right, now for the actual sides of the shoe rack. So I started with the front sections and I know I needed the big section at the back. Uh, I did run out of plywood, so I ended up having to use MDF for it as well. But it's all 18 mil um, and secured with pocket holes. 
for the sides I thought it would be easier to put the whole thing on the side of the plywood and MDF and just sort of draw around it. This would give me the exact size that I needed for the panels. I then used my Triton track saw in order to cut it all out. Then once again pocket hole central to attach the side. I think I went a little bit overboard with this again. Too many screws. I then did exactly the same with the other side. Traced it, pocket holed it and attached it. Simple. I then had to discuss with the boss about where the actual rods were going to be to hold the shoes. So did you spot the mistake there? So little tip for you, if you're measuring for a shoe rack, don't use the biggest shoes to judge the gap. Use the smallest shoes because if you don't, the little ones will fall through. This is just an amateur mistake really. So on to mark the holes for the rods that are now going to be too far apart. So I set the punch them and then used a 20mm forcing bit in order to cut it out. The diameter of the hole I needed was actually 22mm because that's the size of the rod I had. But I couldn't find a 22mm force limit, so I had to use what I had. So I knew it was really important to get the holes to match on either side and I didn't really trust my measuring skills. So what I actually did was put the, the other side of the board underneath the one I was hot drilling. That means when I drilled through, it went into the other corresponding piece. And hey presto, I now know where my holes are gonna be. Okay, so now the interesting part, getting these hot oak dowels to fit in properly. So I measured roughly how long I needed, chopped them off at the chop saw, and then proceeded to go over to the band saw. My first plan was to cut a slot in it in, in order to ease the tension and get it into the hole, but that didn't work. So I ended up just trying to shave a little bit off of each side by uh, putting it through the bandsaw and just twisting it every time. Oh look, it's Mr. Hitty again. So I tried to gently knock these in place on one side of the rack in order to get them solid. I did hit a little bit too hard and because it's MDF it did blow out the back but I got them in there well enough. I then offered up the other section to it and then tried to get it roughly in the right place. Just pushed it in lightly just so I could get it in enough to get a couple of pocket holes in which would hold it secure. I then proceeded to bash the living hell out of it until it did what I wanted it to do. Come on! There's not a lot more I can say. I just hit it. Hard. Oh. I once again mismeasured what I needed and had a small slip at the back that I needed to take off. It was hitting the underside of the stairs when I was pushing it in. I gotta be honest, this is probably the most I've ever used my track saw. Like ever. It was then time to bust out the new toy. Well, I say new, I've had this belt sander for years. I got it on a nice deal from Screwfix and it's a Triton 1200 watt belt sander. And my God, does this remove material fast. It didn't take long in order to make sure everything was flush and smooth. And most of the scorch marks from the track saw was gone. So I've got these 25 mil strips uh, that I've cut and these are going to act as runners for the, for the wheels because I can't have them wobbling and jiggling around um, and it will help them easily find the way back into the, the groove as well. So I've cut these to 25mm and now I'm going to uh, cut them on the truck saw to roughly that length, whatever that is. So I cut the runners down to the length of 900mm and then proceeded to put holes periodically through it. I wasn't really measuring where the holes were going to be, I just sort of placed them where I felt they needed them. I did try to do this with 12mm ply before and nail them to the floor but they just kept getting knocked off and, and broken. So by doing it with the 18mm ply and making it a little bit thicker I think it should hold and guide those wheels in quite nicely. And it's important to get help when you can, especially from upper management. Yeah. 
which is great until they start inspecting your work. Thank you. There you go, nice, easy, simple, understair storage for shoes. Hardest part of this was actually getting into that space in the first place. I am not a small man, and that is a very small space. But once I had an idea of how much space I was working with, this seemed like the easiest idea. Trying to do a draw in that space would have been near impossible, and I would have lost a lot of the space as it is. That's why we changed the bottom frame of it as well, just to make it that little bit lower but holds a decent amount of shoes, uh, especially with mine that are fairly large. So yeah, wife's already modified it and put a few baskets in there just to organize it a bit more. And I'm sure there's many more things that you want me to do with it. But this is part one. So when you come back in the next video, I will show you how I will conceal it um, and make it look like it's not even there, hopefully. See you later. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Part two is going to be coming up for you real soon. If you can't wait, check out the other videos here. If you haven't, hit that subscribe wall and that bell so you get notifications of when my next video is out. If you don't follow me on Instagram and Facebook, make sure you do. Check me out and I'll uh, see you around.